let me welcome you again at Developer Conference 2023 after a few years of a break. And it's really my pleasure to be opening this uh, session of talks here at the Agilite Agility and Day and Leadership uh, track. Uh, please feel free to scan the QR code. Uh, this is just, you know, my way of gathering your feedback during the talk. Uh, at the end, we want to spend some time also at the Q&A uh, session. Uh, but also, if you have any, anything else, feel free to raise during the talk. And let's try to make it interactive for those here in presence. Uh, unfortunately, those who are online can still use this uh, QR code to, you know, start providing some questions uh, for the Q&A session. Or I will change at the end for the feedback if you would like to improve for the future of the talk, et cetera. With that being said, uh, I will start with a very brief introduction. So uh, I'm also one of those uh, all-time Red Hatters uh, since 2006. And actually, it has been quite a few years since I had about a technical talk here at the developer conference about security features, SC Linux, and all the stuff which is pretty much used today uh, for the containers you are most likely also using. But today, I will have a non-technical talk and I'm really curious to see, you know, some feedback already here. I see one vote, uh, why are you here? Or if you want to, you know, shout out, what are your expectations? Anyone? I know you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that counts. Anyone? <laughs> no? So, uh, who's in a technical, you know, role or position? Just a, oh, so, so many technical, non-technical role or position? Is it to be less? Okay. So <laughs> this is it was really hard for me to, you know, to guess what will be the target audience. And I was actually expecting quite the opposite, right? Much less technical people and more uh, non-technical roles. So I will try to adjust it. Uh, but again, feedback welcome even during and we will uh, continuously keep improving it together. So I will start with really a lot of, lot of text, but it's not so important. It's more for those who want to review or watch it online. But what was the motivation? How I ended up in, you know, pretty much even proposing this kind of talk for the developer conference here today. So in 2019, I switched from engineering after 13 years to the IT. And last few years, the IT infrastructure organization was growing. Uh, based on the complexity, teams were being merged, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And with the size, there comes a lot of challenges. And one of those challenges was really how can we get organized better internally to serve the needs of the internal customers. So looking at the audience and knowing now it's 90 plus percent pretty much over here. So you are the customers of all the internal bits and pieces of the internal infrastructure. And we want it to be, as you can see also here, seen as one. Not like, you know, we are serving duplicity, you know, offerings, uh, services, uh, some of them are even competing. It's really kind of hard after you know such uh, such a you know, merging of the teams and uh, bringing new people in the complexity uh, in regards to the collaboration communication was kind of becoming really really complex and a burden. So there was an idea uh, based on a few years ago when I read a book about the team topologies. For those who are familiar, uh, give me thumbs up, uh, even here in person, so I know how many people are already familiar, great. And for those who don't, uh, really, feel free to read the book. It's easy to you know, digest. You can open it up anywhere and start reading, or just Google the term team topologies uh, for your inspiration and maybe learn something new. And it was really the idea. How can we uh, approach this challenge uh, to design our ecosystem in a better way? And really, this is the list of all the, and even more uh, items we wanted to tr at least try to address. This is one of the slides I used one plus year ago, uh, really, during the early you know, introductions to the team. So this is not something prepared just for today, but just you know, as create the flow of uh, this talk. On the left-hand side, you can see what we were already working on. Uh, on adopting and pretty much saturating the ecosystem with the agile ways of working with a focus on the delivery. Uh, and this is where there was a good fit from my perspective with the uh, concepts and the approach of team topologies. 
Also, we were already working and moving towards adopting and growing the product management practices. So this was also well aligned. And what we haven't had yet, uh, and we are also working on, is really start focusing and build the foundations to bring us closer to the right hand side, which is the business uh, and the leadership side uh, of the equation. And that's the voice of the customer like kind of approach. And our goal really to focus on the satisfaction of the customers. Again, for the technical folks, the TLDR version is on this slide, but we will talk more in detail uh, on the following slide. This is uh, pretty much the agenda for today, and really 10,000 foot uh, kind of approach. So our journey was from as is, where back then, today, where can we get, where do we want to be? And we use the team topologies, again, just as the one of the main communication languages. Uh, as you will see, this is also for inspiration because from my perspective and experience, uh, which, which was the most valuable part of it, uh, is really something you shouldn't be afraid, you know, just to start working with it and you will see some results pretty much soon, I say. So we started with a brief introduction of the team topologies. Then we had to create a map where we are. What do we have today, right? That's the number two, as is state. Then, of course, you start seeing quite a lot of complexity, as you will see on a uh, few slides later. Uh, so we need to start calibrating, normalizing, and pretty much making it readable because it will, gr you know, shock you how complex is your work around you. Uh, then we introduce something which you will see, you know, zoom out to simplify the high level complexity into something which is again uh, possible cognitively just to assess and analyze what do we have and start moving really toward the to be state. Because this is why we are doing it, right? We are not doing it just you know, to know where we are, but we want to improve and get better at something. And the last part is really start executing. And the uh, is maybe not on this slide, but later you will see GEFN, which stands for good enough for now. And this is something which I will really recommend. Don't try to you know, make it perfect and avoid making any steps or any changes because it will be never perfect, <laughs> really. Get it into the state where you feel it's good enough to get you moving forward, make one step forward, but quickly uh, and re uh, iteratively you know, assess, uh, accept the feedback, adjust, and in the cycles keep moving. This is where the alignment with the, these sessions or these tracks with the agility comes into the play. One of the important part in my recommendation was, is pretty much and was also to do the due diligence. Are we really looking and thinking in the right way? Is it going to help us? And this is just for those, and I might also help the technical audience here, how to do the due diligence. I had very good experience with the tools like the Toughworks Radar. This is in the upper right corner. This is Radar where they are evaluating, you know, the trends, the technologies, and giving recommendations in a form: adopt, hold, or you know, avoid, etc. So this is really something important if you haven't heard about it, and it gave us kind of the reassurance. Yes, this idea uh, is really promising and. Uh, should give us some valuable results. As you can see, since May 2020, they were you know, uh, advocating for adopting the product management uh, practices uh, for the internal platforms, which was exactly our case. Also, from the engineering products, platform for the engineering products, this was confirmed uh, in the several other you know, evaluations. But with one uh, important item, which I wanted to mention to you, to hold with a miscellaneous uh, platform teams. That means don't overdo it, right? Don't put platform everywhere because you just have an idea or now it's trendy to call everything platform. No, really be careful because this leads to kind of lack of quality of those platforms where you are missing the understanding what's the purpose? Why is it here? So don't put platform, try to, you know, kind of get the platform onto everything. So be careful and really uh, pay attention whether it's and what type of the platform are you looking after. And when I was preparing the slides for the talk, uh, this is in the uh, lower uh, right hand side, adopt is a few years, a few, years, few days old information that still they are uh, recommending 
to continue adopting and applying the product management to the internal platform. So this is something which can help you to get a buy-in from your uh, management or leadership team, and that's why I thought it's important. And also to confirm that your idea uh, is, is going to be successful. And another important, or um, from my side recommended, uh, analyst firm, the Gartner, is also something which confirmed that yes, this is uh, something where the industry is moving. Now we are starting on this slide already with the, what is the platform as a product. The TT stands for the team topologies. And this is really the screenshots from all the materials you can get online. This is also what uh, I forgot to mention. The objective for today is not to go into the details. We don't have enough time. But I just wanted to get you started or feel free to, you know, uh, find me. I will be here till Sunday and we can talk about it more in detail. But this is something which I'm expecting you will have time, uh, you know, either to search online. I can recommend some, you know, places where to get to know. Also, the Team Topologies has quite nice web pages and a lot of uh, resources for you to self-study and pretty much get you up and running. So what's the platform as a product? So platform is a curated experience for the engineer. This is how they define it which goes the engineers, so you here, if understood correctly, as a technical guys, are those customers. And this is what was also our case. We wanted to get closer, provide higher value to the internal customers. It's not going to be the next day, but this is the long-term pursuit. Uh, and platform as a product, so what does it stand for you? To treat the platform as a product for volunteer internal customers. And the volunteer is really important. It's not something which you will be forcing. This is the only platform you have to do it exactly and only this way. This wouldn't be aligned also with, uh, with the spirit of this conference, open source. But really, it should be guiding you by the customer focus to make sure it's reliable. It's usable for the customers being the internal engineers or communities, etc. And also down here, I listed a few bullet points, which is really important for you to start thinking already uh, to help you to define well your platform. What are the behaviors platforms? We will get more in details about this later. What is the purpose of the platform? This is the most critical. And this is also something which was misused by the concept of the miscellaneous, unclear platforms and the metrics. If you don't know where you are, like you know GPS coordinates, etc., it doesn't get you too far, right? So the metrics to see the progress if you are moving, if the you know anticipated results are getting towards you, that's it. This is another lot of loaded of information. There's not the intention to teach you today to team topologies. Over here, I will just very briefly mention just you know quick guide or quick sheet kind of information. What are the bits and pieces we started working on? And very briefly, onboarding pretty much everyone we needed from the management, uh, SMEs, uh, senior engineers, etc. So the team topologies on the right hand side is using this kind of, I call it like visual language, which uh, depicts the team interactions, the three team interactions, and team types. Four uh, fundamental team types, and one which is at the very top undefined team type. And this is what you will find most often at the very beginning when it's unclear what should it be the, what is it? Where should be positioned? But over the time, as you start discussing, you will figure it out. Oh, actually, this team fits the concept of the streamlined team, or we would like to evolve it into the enabling team, etc. For those who read the team topologies uh, book or some articles, it will be maybe something you are aware already and the convoy, convoy slow or how to pronounce it. And over here, I will mention it again later because this was one of the most valuable part and there is a concept where you reverse it. So instead of uh, designing the technology design and technology, technical architecture, around the you know, organizational structure, you try to do the very opposite. You try, and this was also our challenge or one of the aspiration, to improve how we are organized internally, not uh, vice versa, but to match the technical architecture and the technical needs for the internal uh, platforms. And it was also something which I would focus or recommend to focus on, to try to focus on the technical needs first, and then organize the people, avoiding to get into who's reporting to who, uh, how we are pretty much uh, in the org chart organized today, and etc. So one of the most important parts, 
four theme types, streamlined, enabling, complicated platform. You can revisit the definitions later. This is not so important for today. For today, what's the most important is the very bottom one, the platform team, because this is what we'll be focusing on, and the concept of the streamlined team also. Because the platform team's purpose, as you can see, is to provide the service and the compelling product to the internal, most likely or most targetedly, the streamlined teams who are focused on the continuous value delivery and to focus on pretty much not being interrupted or spending too much unnecessary time on figuring out on their own what do they need, how to achieve it. That's the part of, for the platform team to address by providing the, what's he, uh, shown here as XAAS, the triangle, which is something as a service. And this is the basic or the main concept uh, also within the context of this talk, platform teams uh, offering uh, something as a service to the streamlined teams and others within the organization. Any questions at this point? Because it's familiar maybe to me, but there is, there is a lot of information. Okay, so uh, let's jump right into the example. Uh, to get you started. As I explained on the previous slide, the basic you know, visual uh, kind of symbols, at the very bottom you can see the platform team, right? This is the team which is offering a service. What kind of services are your teams using, anyone? Feel free to shout out. Snowflake. Snowflake, okay, anything else? You're silent, I know it's morning. <laughs> Confidential, okay, but you have so your teams are using services which are maintained and provided by some other teams, right? And this was the main idea. This is why I wanted to re-emphasize this now that we wanted to focus on adopting the product management practices, how to run the platforms. So not just any other team because easily just shift towards we do everything, right? but really to understand the concept of the self-service, uh, which is the X as a service kind of a goal, right? So on this uh, picture, you can see the, in the middle of the yellow streamline teams. Look at it, in our case, mostly running using the Scrum, but pretty much it can be engineering team. It can be some uh, front-end team or another development team, pretty much dealing with the end-to-end -end delivery. But uh, also, you can see here the kind of interactions. At the beginning, the first two teams at the top, the yellow one, need to collaborate. This is what it means. Also, uh, towards the later stages of the delivery, the, the very top one streamline team needs to facilitate uh, and get some help from the enabling team. The purpose of the enabling team is to help to adopt uh, something new, which the new team doesn't have, uh, the streamline team doesn't have yet but their goal is to teach them how to do it, to make them autonomous. In the contract or something which we are not going to be using very often here, but it's the complicated subsystem team. And the complicated subsystem team is the type of the team where there is some really high level expertise required and it's better to let the team to do it for you instead of you know, spending a lot of effort and time to show you and to teach you how to do it on your own and they will come and get, it done, get the job done for you. At the very bottom again, this is the platform team serving the services, and that's it. But let's move on, because these diagrams will get into the real situation. This is something you know, very easy. Cool, so after a couple of weeks of you know, we introduced what is the streamlined team, what is the platform, et cetera, we were starting to map across the whole organization. So what do we have, the S state today? And this is one of the snapshots. You know, the, the, it was even bigger, let me put it this way, but I wanted to something that will fit the screen. And on the mirror, uh, which has a good integration with this kind of uh, visual diagrams for the, for the uh, team topologies, by the way. And this is how we started mapping. So different teams started, so what do we do? What, uh, who do we serve? Who do we interact with? What interactions do we have? So really, mapping out the SE state. Why I'm showing you, it will get easily, depending on the size and the complexity of the environment, into something like this, which is really <laughs> pretty much even impossible for one person to understand you know, completely. 
And that's why uh, also we wanted to start calibrating. Do we see some patterns? Do we see something we are pretty much already mapping duplicitly and etc. So this is where we spend a lot of time, you know, to calibrate, adjust and repeat until we uh, again understood, yes, this is good enough for now and we are ready to move forward. When we felt start move ready, that is polished enough after the calibrations and adjustments, uh, we've introduced the concept of something which is the internal platform topology, so pretty much just encapsulated. This is the red row. So instead of looking at the platform, which is consisted or built of another internal platforms or streamlined, et cetera, you just don't need this detail anymore. You just hide it and you just represent it as one platform on the right hand side. Uh, is it showing? No, over here. So this helps you to visually, uh, you know, hide the unnecessary details. Again, not to get distracted by something you don't need to solve at this point. But this is helping you to understand and get as enough as possible clarity about what is the purpose of these platforms, who are we interacting uh, with, facilitating, collaborating, etc. And especially this, is, this was the point where we started focusing on mapping the external uh, teams, the external internal customers, external from our perspective as an organization, but still internal uh, within Red Hat. So this is how we oversimplified, but again, by zooming out and merging those platforms into one bigger picture. So this is the concept I wanted to show you, because again, depending on the complexity and size of the environment, most likely you will also end up with something like this. And this is, again, it's not important, the content, the specific, you know, uh, names, etc. but just again, to get you, or give you the feel and the idea what most likely you will be ending up with. Also, you can see that we started or needed or felt like we need to start making or adding more information like those red bubbles. Like what are the gaps, what are the challenges, what works for us already today. But again, this was still part of mapping and getting good enough clarity as of one of the first half uh, of the process to understand and refine the internal platform use. So this is how do we see ourselves internally. And if you remember, at the very top, our goal is to be seen as one team externally. So we will hide it. So this is how we also mapped out the external perspective and their needs. We needed to spend a lot of time, and this was uh, pretty much the biggest uh, uh, effort to understand the external customers. We needed to start adding the other tools like the spreadsheets, a lot of discussions, dialogues, but really, who are the customers? to map them because it's not like just the names, but we introduce some sort of persona mapping. Are the developers, are there sysadmins, are there uh, in some marketing teams, are there, you call it out, you name it, right? Really, uh, to represent them and uh, to normalize them into something which will be again, uh, easy to, easier to work with moving forward when we list it, and this is one of the bullet points. So what do we own today? Are we going to offer it, you know, Till when, right? Does it still make sense? But again, repeat until <coughs> you feel it's good enough uh, for now to start you moving forward. And this is something which we more or less as a Polish version ended up. So roughly 10, 10 plus teams uh, in regards to the streamlined teams who were focusing on the continuous value delivery to the customers, but from the customer perspective, they are not, they don't need to be visible. They are encapsulated by the platforms. You can see here that uh, we also, uh, keeping in mind the Convoy's law and the inverse maneuver of Convoy, pretty much understood that, oh, actually, we are also layering the platforms internally already. So all of this above is what will be seen as one huge platform from the customer perspective, but internally we had some core platform. Uh, you can understand like network services. If you need to rag and stack and get everything in place, and the top of, you need some you know, services also at the top or in the middle, I would call it, between at the very top you can understand that could be like the cloud uh, infrastructure for you. Uh, very, the abstraction is really uh, at the higher levels, but also closer to the real customers. And also, this is uh, not intended to be precise, but uh, to get you the feel, but it's quite, let's say, good enough uh, complexity, how we really ended up pretty much simplifying all the completing. And if you remember the couple of few slides down, 
the huge bubbles of different teams, different services, uh, etc. We also ended up with quite a few teams which are called in the uh, purple kind of verticals, and these are the enabling teams. These can be either teams of someone specialized or teams enabling mostly through the facilitating like the delivery uh, functions or another shared functions within the organization. And also we needed some of the specialized functions which really are the complicated subsystem teams uh, to be closely either present within the three platforms as they are layered from the foundation to the very top uh, platform level or even separately and serving the whole uh, organization. Any questions at this point? This is more from the technical perspective, you call it, as I mentioned, the network, right? First, it doesn't make sense to serve any cloud services if they are not connected, right? So this is the network layer, and it's being used even internally. So the platform of BAO is using the services offered within, the, uh, within that large platform uh, for their own needs. So this is, for example, this triangle. So you use... Yes. Yes, and this is again oversimplified. This is like the blueprint to adopt, to present, and now we will get to the point like how to execute the change. It's not overnight. And this is also what uh, the, the team topologies uh, kind of addresses or helps you to guide through. They are providing some specific patterns, again, depending on your field uh, of the technology domain, how to evolve the team. So most likely even today, when you have just a streamlined teams who are serving the services for their own, how to decouple it? How, how to know what should become or turn into the platform and what should be separated just for supporting the flow of the delivery, not being interrupted by some you know, delays or some specialized functions and to move and try to move toward the self-service kind of mentality where you're enabling the internal customers to serve themselves to their needs while you are maintaining the internal product for them at a high quality. Does that answer your question? Yes, but it's uh, complicated. It's complicated, yes. That's why I also said this, <laughs> uh, this is something which I drew intentionally not within giving the names because it, it wouldn't make sense. This is really depending on the internal context but from the customer perspective, they are seeing external to the infrastructure platform, they are experiencing just a couple you know, services for them. Again, I'm not specifying, there, there are more, but it will be again hard to read, but this is just to give you an idea that you will define, these are the internal platforms serving the internal, but this is like two encapsulations levels right here we are looking at, but also we have a lot of externally facing services because this is our primary, you know, uh, objective, right? Cool. Any other questions? Yes? So the question is how to handle the dependencies between the teams and the platforms, oh, yeah. right? And uh, is your question uh, from the customer external perspective or internal? Because it would be the same kind of. Uh, internal customer. Okay, okay. So in that case, this is exactly where also from the perspective of team topologies, the product kind of mindset and the practices come in place. How do you release something which are the cross dependencies? And this is where the collaboration, the communication is the key. And this was also one of the anticipated benefits we wanted or desired to you know, get out of this uh, approach to align better. So try to remove these unnecessary dependencies, to try to avoid or mitigate them where that doesn't make sense and bring them closer for the more effective. So these dependencies or the circle or the circle of the dependencies will be kind of not even avoided but through the collaboration, close collaboration and communication, minimized. If that answers the question. We will need to look at the specific technical, but this is actually uh, the concept of the convoys law, where either the organization is, uh, or the, the software 
architecture is going to mimic the or, or, or organizational structure, but we wanted to do it opposite. So when you try to design the teams in a way that fits better the technology architecture, this kind of goes away or you are iteratively moving towards removing this uh, and minimizing this back. But to be honest, it's impossible to avoid it completely, right? So it will be still be there. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Starting with the QA only? Okay, so I will go very briefly. We have five uh, last minutes. Uh, definition and the formation of the new teams when you are done with your architecture, how to start executing, right? And this is the most important part also from my perspective and experience to focus on the teams, not on the individuals, right? These are very recommendations. And also what I haven't mentioned is that uh, it's important to try to avoid getting into the people discussions uh, uh, till the very last moment possible and to focus on your design and the architecture first. Because this will be much easier when you are clear and you see the benefits of why it's better to do design this, you know, internal architecture this way and just, you know, get uh, get what do we need. Also what's important, the clarity of the roles, responsibilities and the measurements. So you know where you are at and if you are moving in the right direction because this won't be possible to do everything uh, at the one time. Also, long list of observed benefits. You will get the slides. Also, it will be in the recording, so you can get uh, through it uh, later. We already mentioned uh, many of those, which uh, let me have a look at it. We haven't uh, mentioned. Very quickly, from my experience, uh, to adopt and understand. It might be overwhelming for the half an hour talk, uh, but definitely when you have more time to look at it, uh, it's easy to you know, get you started and introduce to your teams. Also, I mentioned one of the few bullet points, communication, the collaboration really improved significantly. We've already had uh, some experience with the product management. It was also one of the goals as we had mixed environment. Some were moving or operating more in the project management like ways. Some were already working with the product management, you know, uh, practices, uh, etc. Uh, but uh, all of them had uh, the kind of desire and it was also important to have the commitment from the leadership and the organizational kind of uh, decision to work within the agile ways of working or modern ways of working as we can call it, etc. And the visual language is what I like also created this presentation within the mirror. So the mirror was a very, very helpful tools. Uh, a lot of other, you know, noteworthy substances when I was kind of or we were moving toward the end of, you know, pretty much getting ready to start executing the change. The unfix was very important also for me. So if you want to go further, even maybe less technical, the unfix is something I would recommend or, you know, to motivate you to uh, have a look at. Also, if you are in a position facing a lot of project management, the PMI Agile Discipline Toolkit really uh, is something uh, I have very good experience working with. Uh, if you are in the more agile Scrum environment, Scrum at scale, and also the open practice library uh, is another great resource of uh, knowledge. And the knowledge and the knowledge management is something I will end this slide with because this is critical. Not just technical, but really the knowledge and the experience in general and have a good knowledge management strategy, you know, ready uh, to support the folks transitioning into new responsibilities where you need to grow the new skills, etc. With that being said, thank you very much. Uh, feel free to provide a question. I will check yours or for those online. Questions and answers. Last few minutes. Which kind of metrics do you use that are understood by the management? Metrics? <laughs> yeah. So pretty much, yes, uh, I can answer very briefly. You remember those three platforms? So these were, and this is where I like the unfix, the kind of the concept of the turf to make sure these are the areas of the closest as most interactive collaboration. But again, try to reduce the complexity and the size as much as possible. And that's why I like also the team first approach, not to have 10, 15 people like teams, but really try to have smaller teams which are much more flexible. And if the type of the work allows it to be autonomous. Any other questions? Yeah, there are questions, read it out. Results. Inspiration, okay. Yeah. 
Any other questions? I don't see. I, I just see one there. Nero. I see like six. Six? Come on. What's going on? Can I read it? Or? Yes, please. What advice would you give to someone trying to build a platform today? What advice would you give to someone to build a platform team today? Just get started. Really, <laughs> don't avoid it and focus on really what do you have today and especially focus on the customers because this is why you are here right you are here to serve the internal customers or even external customers any other question should platform team have a product manager if platform team is treated as product it's definitely helpful if you have the at least someone who's knowledgeable and skilled and this is also what i meant by the knowledge management that uh, if you don't have the experience you might struggle and I would uh, really recommend also to spend on building the foundations, being at various agile kind of ways of working, the product management, etc. Question? Uh, actually, a follow up to that question, because I, I was working in a team that was providing a platform for two years without a PM, and it was hell. We have to talk to business, and we're engineers, we don't know how to talk to yes. business. Yes, yes. <laughs> so the, there was a you know, comment that without the product manager, uh, is really hard and this is really we you are here to focus on the customer and the product management should I'm not saying it always but should help you to be better at it and you need to grow the skills it's not just one-man show definitely and also from the product management perspective focus on the value what's valuable for the customer not for you because this is very common for the technical people and organization they focus on what's easy or what they like to do but it might not be the best for the customer. <laughs> so this is where the product manager and some are really skilled and good at it can help you to pretty much get better. Any other questions? I know we are two minutes over the time. How do you deal with lack of expertise with the language uh, used for cloud service services? Uh, in Just words, uh, knowledge, That's a complicated question. I'm not going to take it probably <laughs> this time. Uh, Thank you. Feel free to stop by. So thank you very much again and have a great rest of the conference.